<laughs> my name is Theodore Ptak, and my current jo uh, job title is nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I used to study Latin, and I uh, loved Caesar's writings. He wrote Sic Transit Glorium, which means, loosely translated, means glory fleets very quickly. So my hope in life has always been that people who know me won't forget who I am within a week or two. <laughs> I think my biggest accomplishment probably is um, it's bringing the two procedures to the residents of Ontario. ERCP, when it was first introduced, was a great novelty with, um, there was a lot of resistance to it. Okay, so that's, that's a very interesting story. I, uh, when I came back from the University of Chicago, my colleague, Sebi Kobayashi, who was who was at the University of Chicago with me, called me within, I think, t three weeks when I was here. And uh, he called me and said, we're doing some kind of a new procedure over there, which I saw, they call it endoscopic retrograde cholangiography. You better come down and have a look, which I did. I flew down to Japan and spent time at the, in Nagoya at the Aichi Cancer Center Hospital and uh, saw what they were doing. And, uh, and then I brought this back and we, and we did the very first ERCP in this province and probably Canada, as far as I can tell, at the York Fringe Hospital. And, and that was because uh, York Fringe Hospital always had this welcoming attitude about new things, they want new things and, and so forth. So we did the very first ERCP there and it spread and uh, we taught many, many people from across the province and across the country for ERCPs and today ERCP is a standard of practice. It was not at the time. Believe me, it was not. So that's how it evolved. For it initially started off as being just diagnostic and became therapeutic. So today you don't do diagnostic ERCP, you do only therapeutic for stones, tumors, cancers, and so forth. Endoscopic ultrasound uh, was introduced also by us. Uh, at, uh, it started off at the York Finch and then became part of the, when it became Humber River, it expanded in Humber River. And it was introduced again, I guess uh, there were objections to it from uh, the medical societies, from the OMA. And I, I personally had to negotiate with the Ministry of Health. And there was a Dr. Richards in um, Kingston, Ministry of Health, who helped me and we negotiated the first uh, fee schedule for endoscopic ultrasound. Again, endoscopic ultrasound is now the standard of practice, but we were the first, and uh, we introduced it to all of Ontario, definitely. But when it was first uh, introduced, uh, endoscopy was, uh, I was at Toronto Western at the time, and uh, uh, surgeons at the time used to do what's called lepros used to do laparotomy for diagnosis, and uh, they used to, when people had problems, they used to surgically operate in the abdomen to see what was inside, what was wrong. And of course, I said, that's wrong. <laughs> we, we can use endoscopes to do that. There was a great deal of resistance. When I introduced ERCP, the same thing happened. There was a great deal of resistance, but there were also physicians who saw the future and who jumped on the bandwagon. The same thing with endoscopic ultrasound, which is a procedure for staging and diagnosing cancer and many other diseases. When we uh, first tried to do that, there was a, a great deal of resistance from colleagues as well as from the OMA, so I had to do it on my own. I think that's why I'm proud of that, because I didn't give up. I actually pursued it and kept on trying. So that today, I, in my humble opinion, this is one of the best gastroenterology departments in, in the province. We have, great, we have great equipment, we have great physicians, we have, the, we have everything. And, uh, we, we, we really should be called the center of excellence in gastroenterology. That's not my decision because, as you know, today I am a nobody. <laughs> and, and as Caesar said, sick transit glorium. <laughs>